Hey, what's up, guys? Zero for Hire, and this is the Zero for Hire podcast. And I have uh, had a pretty rough couple of days. If you read my post today, article, blog, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, I wrote out my thoughts in a post called Unhinged, where I basically have been lamenting the fact that we live in this society where everybody is functionally unhinged at some point, and it's happening more and more frequently, um, including myself. I don't think that anyone is immune to it because of the structure of, of the, the world that we live in right now and the life that we live. And what I mean by that is We have a situation where nobody trusts our government. Nobody trusts authority figures. Like, we don't trust pastors. We don't trust um, the mainstream media. We don't trust anybody. And so it's just been difficult for all of us to, to reconcile the tragedies that are inevitable in life. You know, like we're dealing with Hurricane Helene. And it's hard enough to deal with a hurricane taking out entire cities, you know, taking out entire towns. It's like biblical level proportion events. Uh, My brother lives in North Carolina and he lives next to one of the towns that was completely wiped out. And to hear him talk about it is just rough, man. It's hard. Um, Because, you know, he's lost things and people and people that means so much to him. Um, he told me that he hadn't had cell phone service for a couple days, which is why I couldn't get a hold of him. And he wasn't able to get in contact with some of his friends. And then, uh, some of like, he couldn't get in contact with any of his friends. So imagine you're going through this situation as a hurricane, disaster of any kind. You don't have cell service for days. Your family's trying to contact you. Nobody can get a hold of you. And then, You can't get a hold of any of your friends because that's the situation he was in. And now he's starting to see multiple people in his life turn up on Facebook dead. They found the body. Somebody alerted their Facebook to let their friends know. So he's he's enduring incredible loss. And all the while, um, people are talking about harp. They're talking about lithium deposits within North Carolina and quartz deposits in North Carolina because it's plausible and it's rooted in reality. And so our distrust of our own government is so high that the loss of life is somewhat diminished by the conspiratorial nature of things. And that is the state that we live in. Um, we're not allowed, we're not really giving people the grace or the, the privilege of disagreement anymore because we're so, we're running so high emotionally. It's, it's unhinged really. And that's the word that I'm sticking with. That's the word I'm using because that's what it is. It's not a, a a reasonable or responsible approach to reality. Um, now, a lot of you guys know that after you read the post or if you talked to me the last couple of days, um, a lot of this is tied to my exploration of AI. And there were people in my life all along that say they don't trust AI. It's going to end the world. Um, it's stealing their work. It's stealing their jobs. It's going to destroy humanity. A lot of different thoughts. Um, it's just morally wrong. And there are threads that you can pull on every one of those statements and you can follow them, um, you know, to to hit the bottom of that pit. But they're each their own rabbit hole, those statements. And there are counter arguments and there are counter philosophies for each one. And um, without addressing and then countering every argument, my thought is has been demonstrated on this show for the last few years at least it's been at least two years right guys let me know if you remember when we first started talking about AI 
or rather, more appropriately, we should say language models, because that's what we've been talking about. Now, in the art world, it's not a language model, it's something different. And, and the implications there have been more dangerous in terms of um, when stocks fell because there was a fake AI picture of some disaster, you know, a, a tool of deception is the best word for it. And that's not unhinged. But what is unhinged is the way the indie comic guys are responding because they they have something of a moral code. And it's largely because a lot of people don't have morals. So if you don't have actual morals, then you have to make up a moral code to live in. This is just, this is why it's stupid for people who want to pretend that they're not religious. Because everybody's religious. And this is a good example of that. Everyone is religious. Everyone has their own version of cult mentality. And this is by far some of the worst cult mentality that I've noticed or that I've seen in the, in the last few years. Uh, worse than any ideology worse than any political stance, um, the, I, I call it, okay, so in politics, you have Trump derangement syndrome for people who can't handle any quotes, any ideas, any thoughts about Trump whatsoever. We call that Trump derangement syndrome. They instantly respond with hate. Um, what, what we have here, and that's called, uh, Trump derangement syndrome is called TDS, if you haven't heard it, because apparently some people haven't heard it. Um, there is something similar going on in the indie art world and it's AI derangement syndrome and if you want to shorten that you can call it AIDS AIDS and I think that's hilarious uh, because that's you know, like, like why be generous about it I've had people say that you're a, you're a piece of tr we'll, we'll say trash if you use AI um, it's morally wrong it's stealing, like it's literally stealing, um, unironically, uh, with zero media literacy about how we got here. And and that's fine, but, uh, you know, I've tried to talk to some people about the comparisons to their arguments because every argument has an analogous comparison to go along with it, you know? Like, if I look at, let's say, uh, Ramos, um, um, What's his name? Uh, his name, Ramos. Hubert, Huberto Ramos. One of my favorite Marvel art, manga artists, comic book artists. And, and Massimine Shiro. And I say, I want to draw inspiration from Ramos and Shiro. And create this style and create a book in the style of Ramos and Shiro. Am I stealing their work? Am I stealing their style? Um, or am I drawing inspiration from both of their styles? I think the answer is yes, um, to a degree, for both. Am I tracing their work? No. Uh, am I drawing heavily from their inspiration? Am I straight up copying how they would do it? Yes. And uh, the moral implication there could be stealing, could be paying homage. It could be a lot of different things. But when AI does it, then all of a sudden people lose their mind. And that's what makes uh that's what's so unreasonable about it unreasonable about it to me. Because this is something that's been going on already. Now ultimately, I think the psychology lands on people feel fear being replaced. And they feel that their ideas aren't good enough and that they're going to be replaced by, by AI and that it's gonna steal their job, it's gonna steal their position, it's gonna steal their purpose. Is and that in in that respect, it is an existential threat. To which I will respond. Yes, you're correct. Um, and you no, know, new technology displaces old technology. That's a, just a given. You don't see too many typewriter repairmen around anymore. And if I hadn't gone through something like this with the advent of digital music as a musician, then I wouldn't have the fortitude to survive this wave of art transition slash replacement. People don't need a violinist anymore if they have software that can adequately impersonate a violin. Same with drums, same with guitar, same with bass, same with a lot of instruments. 
So why would you opt for live musicians when you can just use samples? You know, this is the same kind of argument. Uh, somebody talked about how pilots use autopilot. I have talked about on my show how the AI will get you 80% of the way there at best, but not much, not much better than that. So when you're insisting that it's going to replace you, I, I say you have to look at what are, what other factors are left. Um, I've gone to a studio and paid someone to record and arrange and mix my music, not arrange, but record and mix my music according to my own arrangements, only to have their musical ideology get in the way. Because they have this ideological bend that everything has to be pure to their standards. So when I say this part needs to be auto-tuned, and they say, you have a great voice, why do you need pitch correction? I said, I didn't ask for pitch correction, I said auto-tune. I want heavy auto-tune as a stylistic choice, and then they get upset. Now, why do I have to deal with my engineer getting upset because I want to use auto-tune? If I say I need these effects applied this way, it's a stylistic choice, I'm spending money for time, and yet I have to explain to the engineer and sometimes argue with the engineer to get my music that I'm paying to have recorded, arranged the way I want it. Sometimes sending in for multiple revisions because it wasn't done the way I asked it to be done the first time. Versus using AI. And having those automation tools at my disposal to achieve the outcome that I want without having to argue with some engineer about his ideology. That's the benefit, and that's why you will be replaced. If, if you're the type of artist who flakes out and doesn't deliver for six months, if you're the type of artist who procrastinates and w gives a, a certain amount of time and then spends three days working on all the art at once because you had two weeks to do it and you didn't bother, you're going to be replaced. If you're the type of artist who can't deliver a reasonable turnaround or you won't answer your emails or you jack your prices up in the middle of the procedure or you drop the project in the middle of the project you're going to be replaced if you're the type of artist who won't work with someone because they like a certain artist or politician or musician or other public figure or are part of some ideology that you disagree with you're going to be replaced if you're unprofessional and hard to deal with as a person in general, yes, you're going to be replaced because nobody is entitled to deal with your crap. Nobody wants to deal with your crap, and it's your fault. Now, this te technology might have been made out of a different type of necessity, but the reason that I use it, they're for the reasons I just listed. I went on Facebook, I joined groups, I have a cynical personality. I get it. A lot of that is my fault. And so when I uh, mentioned AI, I got a bunch of other artists dumping, dogpiling me, really. And in those comments, I saw other people who had been in arguments with before. Oh, I tried to be nice all the time. I don't know why he would just use a. No, you weren't. You were being an a-hole, just like everybody else. There was a guy who was like, snapping on me when I he was asking people for their scripts and I'm like I don't think people are you know I think people are reluctant to give their scripts to strangers on the internet well I'm a professional and I do this and I I don't need and blah 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 why are you asking strangers for their scripts on the internet if you're so high and you know high up on the food chain and now he's like oh I've never been anything but nice to people uh Zhen Zhang whatever his name is Every time you ask for a basic question, he's like, I, I, that's easy for me. I never have problems. Okay, good for you. But, like, nobody's asking that crap. I'm like, these are people I don't want to deal with anyway. Just high on their horse, having a good day, deciding to dump on everybody. Now, I'm not the best uh, at 
or a uh, nicest person on the internet either. Like if I ask for, if I say, hey, I'm looking for an artist, um, if you have a website with your rates, uh, please post your link or your rates so I can contact you. And then I get a thousand DMs and I'm just like, that. I don't want DM. Like I put it in the post. Please don't DM me. Just just give me your website so I can check out your work. And they won't do it. They, they're in my DMs. They're speaking broken English. Days and days of just like spam messages coming through. Hey, I'm looking for other writers to collaborate with because I want to see how other writers work. Tell me about your project. Let's get a budget going. It's never what I asked for. It's like freaking monkey's paw. It's never the wish that I wanted. And yet, when I posted using um, AI as a brainstorming tool, they're like, oh, you don't have to do that. And, and I don't understand why you would go to AI. We've been here the whole time. But you guys are a-holes. That's why. You're bad people. I'm salty, you're salty. And we've been button heads ever since. I don't want to deal with it. So, that's been a big issue, man. And it's just people being unhinged. And it causes me to come unhinged. When reality, when your response doesn't line up with reason, with, with reality or a reasonable response, and I'm like, why are people acting like this? Why are people behaving this way? That freaks me out. And I get unhinged. So that's what's been going on this this week. Now, I left. I got kicked out of the manga group for posting my podcast about comic books. Whenever I do a podcast about a comic, a comic review, or making comics or something like that, I would post it in the manga group. They just banned me outright with no warning and didn't tell me why. You guys got the same podcast that I've been posting, so if anybody knows exactly what it was that may have been interpreted interpreted as offensive, let me know. But that's what happened. And I felt like um, maybe I called out or, or stepped on somebody's nerves about how some of these groups are just there to elevate the, the person who created the group. They're like, I'm going to make a comic, so I'm going to make a let's have a comics community. And it, they don't want that. They just want to post their own stuff. And, and I've left a lot of groups like that. A lot of these groups are middle-aged men who are angry with the world because they got good at art and they're not famous yet. And, you know, that's a problem that a lot of people deal with. But nobody's entitled to fame. Nobody's entitled to greatness. And, yeah, I, I this weekend I got kicked out just straight up banned from one group for for trying to talk about AI um, and then I was pissed and I was just like are people so frail that they think that AI is coming for their jobs and I got dog piled yes they are they are that frail they're like you're being a jerk you're being salty okay fine I'll wear that um, but I'm not gonna do those Facebook groups anymore and I'm not gonna acquiesce to people who have Given me nothing but trouble in the past. These aren't people that I've made friends with at all, and it and I know it's it's a different situation because I've made a decent number of friends on other platforms, and in person who have similar mindset. It just happens that I guess Facebook is really good for catching that low hanging fruit basic mentality, and there's just more of them. So the horde of stupid can have their little playground. I don't need it. And I, I I already knew better than to try to get into a community of people that are doing the same thing because it doesn't work. They're not often, I should say often, they're not often supportive of each other. It's bitter, it's competition, it's jealousy, it's ego, it's entitlement, it's high school drama, and it's not helpful. You know, none of those people from any of those communities uh, supported my first Kickstarter or comic book or anything like that. Well, actually, that's not true. There was one guy who got a who backed and got a digital version. I think his name was Sean. So, Sean, if you're listening, thanks for supporting the co the, the product, the project, product. But I want to do more projects and I want to learn more about 
crowdfunding and publishing and become better at what I'm doing. And I want to help some people on the way. I have a friend coming out with a comic book. And uh, I've been helping give her some marketing ideas. And she seems like she's going to do better than I did. And I believe that her project will do really well. And I want to help her do as good as she can. So that's where my heart is. That's where my mind is. Um, but I, I honestly, I'm not going to support a project that I don't think is excellent. And so I do strive for excellence. I do push people for excellence. Um, I do stray away from things that I feel like aren't very good. Especially in the, in the Christian community, you get a lot of that in the Christian world. And I'm sorry, it just, I'm, I just, I don't need to be mean to people. It's just like, I think we deserve better than the same old, like, left behind Bible stories type stuff as far as content. And... In general, it's hard, man. Like I, like I said, I, I hired my artists, and I try to hire artists that do good work, and I'm, I'm, you know, apply a lot of scrutiny there because I know that I can't do what they do. So I'm not trying to draw. Maybe there will become a day, maybe there will come a day where I have to put pen to paper myself, but that's not today. And. Um, I'm really grateful and proud of the artists that I've worked with. So that's um that's all I'm talking about right now. Um with all of that said, I, I'm still I still carry a heavy heart with the situation and what's been going down. And I am very grateful for the people who have supported me. I would love to grow and see my projects grow, but apparently I'm just I'm just not ready for the type of growth that I think I want. Because I think I would be able to handle this situation a little better. A little more like Zuby, you know. So, until then, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep brainstorming. Um, I'm going to keep experimenting with tools. AI tools, yes. Um, and whatever, what other, ev why can't I talk? Whatever other tools come my way. Um, because I, I, I want to learn. I'm curious. I have that mind. Now, in the meantime, I will share with my audience here. Um, I have been experimenting with three different AIs. So one is ChatGPT, one is Notebook.lm, and one comes with Leo, uh, or one is called Leo. Uh, I tried Grok. I'm I'm not a fan of Grok. Grok's not there yet. Apparently, Grok will you know, go beyond some of what trad other more mainstream AIs won't do, like ChatGPT, but at the same time, what ChatGPT has to offer, I think it's worth playing within the boundaries because you don't need, a, like, ChatGPT won't do violence. You know, so if I have a story about a fight and I'm like, hey, look, you know, just stick with me for a minute. And I'm like, hey, war game these two profiles in this scenario. Here are the parameters, and here's the outcome that I want, and here is here are some of the dependencies. And it war games all that, and it gives me a scenario. Okay, that's interesting. Let's do another one. And I'll war, war, game, war game the same scenario several times just to get some visuals of what that might look like. Now, what I'm doing is entertaining myself for one <laughs> thoroughly entertaining myself uh, and it gets my imagination going I can see things playing out but when it's done I know that I'm gonna have to write this stuff out or hire a writer and, and outline this stuff out myself to go in the direction that I actually want it to go in because one the, the AI won't take it in the direction I want it to go in you know when a character is killed or is beaten brutally or there's some other terrible thing that happens um it's not going to write that out it's going to be it's going to give me some content warnings some crap uh it's going to add details i never asked it to we've we've been down this road so you know what ai is now i will praise it it has gotten better i think in the last few months really uh, for outlining and wargaming specifically so what i've what i've been doing is 
we'll take my two characters, Steve and Silas. They have personalities. They have a way of communicating. They have things that they do. And I've written five episodes of the audio drama. I've written the comic book script for book for the issue one. Issue two, they go into book one. Um, I'm working on book two. I dropped it for a while, but I will continue because it's a different perspective. I just don't want to get ahead of myself. So all together, that's seven scripts of very specific things that happen that I've already written on my own. I take those scripts, and inside those scripts are character, personality, traits, capabilities, laws, concepts in the, in the book. That's all. All the information is there. So I upload the, the seven scripts, and then I say, based on this information, give me a profile for this character. So it says, character name. Here's what the character, blah, 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 and it might make up some stuff. You know, height and build and things like that. Because it's taking from the script, and then it's just filling in the blanks where it thinks it wants to. Now, I might look at that and say, and that should actually happen. I was like, yes, this character is actually 5'11" not 65 that's that's a way too big and way too strong um he's 511 and let's make his eye color this and let's change this about it and I'll just do a whole list of corrections he doesn't use these weapons um this isn't part of his fighting style um this is the weapon that he's going to use and this is the technology that he's adapted to and this is a part of his philosophy now incorporate this into the profile you just constructed and it'll rewrite the whole thing as a as with the parameters that I gave it. So now, when I'm saying, you know, height, weight, personality, weapons, stuff like that, it's like if I were to dictate to somebody, please do these things. Now, you could say, you could hire somebody. Yeah, I could if I had money and if I was working with somebody. Nobody cares, nobody gives a crap about my project on this level. And something you got to remember. Um, I don't have $100 a page right now. And no one gives a crap about my project. So I have to start somewhere. And for you to insist that I put on this ankle weight and walk around with this ball and chain to satisfy you, you're buzzing on something hard. Because I will do this profile nine times before I'm satisfied with it. And then you know what I do? I copy it, and then I take it into my editor, and then I change a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, this is my workflow. This is how I do it. But I also am doing other things while I do it. Now, I'm not a sit-at-the-keyboard-and-type type of person. I'm generally a voice-to-text type of person. And uh, the only time I sit down at the keyboard is when I've voice the text the crap out of a, a document and I need to format it and then that's when I ended up like changing a bunch of stuff so like for the audio drama play I copy the text for the audio drama and then I'll sit down and then I'll do panel one here's here's the description for panel one here's the line from the thing and I'll go line for line in that audio drama and I will write it and reformat it as I go uh, if I'm in the car and I'm creating a document like that, then I'm using voice to text and I'm talking while I'm driving and I'm talking while I'm sitting at the table and I'm talking, blah, blah, blah. And I get all this stuff out of my head because that's the point. Get it out of my head. And then I take that document and then I sit down and then I format it. So a format day is a very serious day. Um, I don't talk to people on format day. I will work on a document for five hours on format day. I don't like format day. But nobody else is going to do it. Not even ChatGPT. No AI works on my formatting. They can't. They can't do it. It can help me get my ideas out. It can I voice to text, whatever you want to call it. If that's AI, that's AI. That's how I get my ideas out. But when I sit down, I got to format this stuff. I got to make it usable for other people. And then I take that script and then I give it to an artist. And I say... And, well, I don't really have to say anything because I've already done all the work. And then they translate that into art based on their interpretation. So my pages never come back the way I expect them to. It, it Because I'm, it's a being reinterpreted through an artist. And it's, it's an incredible process, man. 
And I'm sure that when I start working with a writer on uh, books and stuff, it's going to be a similar thing. You know, there's going to be a co-writer. And I have like this out and what I'll do is the outline. I take all my ideas, run them through, format, condense, whatever you want to do. And then I take those profiles. And then once I have the profile, I'll say war game, a fight between um, Hammerhead and Breaker. Characters you don't know about yet. And then they will fight each other. And it'll say, here's a list of, you know, here's round one. Here's what's going on. Here's round two. Here's how they did. And it's still super vague about everything. It's just giving me a breakdown of the outline of that I can follow. Because I know what the characters are doing. You know, how they punch and where they kick and what the moves they use. AI doesn't know that. It just said they exchange heavy blows for a bit until they get exhausted. And that's like all I'm going to get from AI sometimes. And I'm fine with that because I'm not looking for it to do the work. I'm looking to con to consolidate my ideas and streamline them in the way that I can move on to the next process. So then I take that and then I extrapolate the details that I want extrapolated. And uh, that's a format day situation again. Um, sometimes I'll do it with voice to text though. And then I will take that scenario and I will just file that away. And once I get dozens and dozens of these little scenarios filed away, I'll wake up in the middle of the night one day and I'll turn on my voice to text and I'll say, here's something that I want and, and here's the scenario and here's how these two things tie together and here's why it happens, blah, 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 blah. And then one day, I wake up and I get all those files together that I've been working on for weeks. And I sit down at my laptop and I say, page one. Setting. Panel one. Here's what's going on. Narration. Blah, 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 blah. Character walks into the... And I start writing my script. And that's what I do. I don't write books. I'm gonna have to, I don't know what I'm going to translate. I don't know, I'm like, if I give a, if, <laughs> if I give an author like like 90 pages of notes, like they're going to fire me <laughs> or quit. But um, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But that's that's my that's what I do, man. My thoughts are vast and scrambled. AI helps make some of that simpler, but it's still stuff that I got to comb through. Like, so for people who are just like, oh, it's cheating, and they're, you're not doing it right, and it's just it's because they don't know what they're talking about. Um, when I say I'm brainstorming. It's just like spitballing. What if he had spikes? And what if he? And it's a lot of time, I end up correcting the AI. I'm just like, no, it doesn't. He doesn't have claws. He doesn't have horns. Do it again. I'll write this thing out. But in the end, it's gonna get filtered and it's gonna get rewritten and it's gonna get reinterpreted by a human. And that's okay too. It just, it takes a lot to create. Like I don't know if. If you're the kind of person who just sits down and writes a story right away with no notes, no outlines, no anything, I guess that's kind of cool. But I I would imagine that your story is not very good. Um, maybe you're Neo. Maybe you're just that one talented person who could just sit down and do it all one run without thinking about it ahead of time. But I, I filter thoughts and then I filter them again and then I filter them again because I, my, I want my stuff tempered by the time I actually start showing people. I don't want them pointing at plot holes and being like, well, what about this? You know, because it's embarrassing. And that's what happened with the 2014 audio plays. I ended up with all these plot holes and things I didn't really consider. And that's why it took me 10 years to start working on it again. You know, before I was like, you know, I could just change this. I don't, I don't have to stick to to these things. Like the citizens chip is, is, serve, is proving to be a real problem for me as a writer. I can change that. It does. I don't have to stick to that. I can do whatever I want, and that's where I'm. That's where I'm starting to wake up and understand. So uh, that's a that's a trip inside my head in terms of writing and the writing process and how I write scripts. And um, you guys are gonna get a lot of stuff coming out real soon. Uh, just even based on the workflow I just gave you guys, because I've been doing this for so long. Um, I have more characters that I want to put out. I got my books out. 
I got my backers books out. I don't have any more obligation on that front. I will probably have to order some more regular books to, for the website so that you can order issue one of the book. But what I'm going to do is I'm start working on book two of the last day. And uh, there's a whole story that's all written out, ready to go. I just got to get it drawn, go through that process again. And then I'm... Um, I'm working on character profiles and getting them formatted in a way to share with my audience and find out where the most interest is. So I have uh, three three characters. I have a character named Breaker. I have a character named Sailor Sarah. They're both solo books. And then I have a story. This is going to sound ridiculous. Uh, Dr. John, Boom Boom Brannigan. What, what, what am I going to call it? I don't even know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's John Silence and Boom Boom Brannigan and the Curse of Aladdin's Lamp. Like, that's a lot of um, public domain IP. <laughs> you know, but, but that's what I'm working with. Um, I'm writing a story about Dr. John, si J John Silence and Boom Boom Brannigan as a team up. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm taking it in some directions I don't think you're you're gonna expect. And uh, it's a very simple concept. It's a very simple book, but I wanted to have a a good story that would serve as a decent foundation for where I'm gonna take it in the future, because um, these are things that I want to bring into my story with the adventure of of Silas Midori. I also have a character that I'm sitting on, and I'm not sure when I want to introduce him. I gotta, I gotta work out the timeline. Named Mars, and I'm very, very excited about Mars. Um, because it's a very non-conventional take on a Superman-type superhero. Basically, like the Superman of my universe, the most powerful character on the planet. And I'm taking it in a direction you're never going to expect. You're never going to see it coming. And even if you do, I think it's it's going to move you emotionally when you read about it. And so that's a, that's a project that I'm excited about. And then for each of these characters, I have been um, trying to... Con um, how do I explain it? Trying to put their personalities on... Um, stat sheets and things like that. Josh gave me the idea. He was like, you should you should do stat sheets for like D&D &D and for other games. And so that's the other thing is I'm trying to translate their the characters into those character stats so we can find out, you know, which ones are most powerful in which ways and if it's surprising. I started doing that um, through a card game called Universus. And based on the stats, I was starting to realize that uh, my main character is not as strong as he needs to be in order to keep up with some of the villains and some of and the other heroes and uh he needs to be able to hold his own so i had to tweak him a bit so i ended up tweaking him i got some bad guys that are so op it's ridiculous i have one just this one bad guy that i can only introduce him two or three times in the story he needs to be kept off grid you know out of the story off to himself or he will ruin the entire planet. Like you know what I mean. Um, and I have a few characters like that. That if they if they if I allow them to run unchecked, they will ruin everything. Um, Omega level threats, as they say. And then I've got some really interesting characters that just change the dynamic of what it means to be a, a villain, a comic book villain that you would expect to see. And then of course I'm going to um, in the next couple of weeks be forming a few simple bad guys the simple ones i'm gonna do later but i just want to get these complex bad guys done first because they, they require so much work i just sent one of the profiles to uh, hannah williams as an extension of her universe um she seen, she gave me the thumbs up on that and uh yeah i'm excited to, to show you guys where we're going with this so i'm gonna have book two I'm working on getting the artwork and everything done, and then I'm gonna do some character profiles and do a a, a poll 
and I don't know how long I'm going to have that poll up, but I'm going to do a poll, and I want to have you guys vote on which characters interest you the most. And so I need to kind of come out with a launch plan for that. I'll, I'll put something in the next email um, newsletter on the 1st when I after I've released my AI album, which I haven't been working on. i got to get back on that. I got most of the songs done for the AI album, but I just kind of like dropped it because I've been doing this character profile stuff and it's taken a lot of my time. And I've just been like entertaining myself, um, listening to podcasts and uh, reading comic books and just kind of gathering information. I got this new Absolute Batman. I haven't read it all all day. I've been doing this stuff and I still haven't read Absolute Batman. So I'm going to get to that tonight. I got to stay up late. So that I can um, work third shift tomorrow. What is this? I got Wolverine Revenge. Number one and two. And then I have From the Ashes Wolverine. So I did get those. I've got the All In DC Special. Um, I am not going to read all this in one night. But I am looking forward to, to digging into it. So I'm going to start with Batman tonight. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great night. I will talk to you soon. If you got questions, comments about... AI and my pro work process or what you'd like to see me do or what you don't want to see me do or you know anything like that let me know in the comments also I, I put it in the chat but I didn't get much response I want to know what you think about spoilers because at the moment I'm writing the entire story through these characters profiles and I'm leaving very little surprise um, there, as far as character development and different arcs they're going to go through and what I would like to do is um, put them out as is, but they're gonna they're gonna tell you things that are gonna be major plot points of the story, like if somebody dies or if somebody transforms and in, into a different type of character or anything like that. And I think there are one, two, uh, three characters specifically that go through major growth arcs. And so yeah, they might they might have abilities that another show would hide their abilities until like the end of the series or whatever and but I I want you to be as excited as I am. Maybe knowing where we're going and then just kind of wondering how we get there. I don't know. I want to know what you think about that. So, uh this is a lot in one podcast. I'm not going to dress this up. I'm not going to put music or any of that. I'm just going to upload it the way it is. And I want to hear from you. Um, if you listen to the podcast, please go to zeroforhire.com and uh, you can ask me a question. I will, I will read that stuff out in the email, sometimes on the podcast, but answer some questions on the email. If you haven't done so already, don't sleep on that. Go to zeroforhire.com and, and there's a box right on there now. You can ask me a question to answer. And uh, you can also leave your comments there if you're not a member of my Substack. You don't have to be a member to leave a leave me a message on zeroforhire.com. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Peace.